The fourth one, that's very straightforward. That's derived from kinetic theory of gas. Now, there's a gas of triatomic molecules and everything it's been given the remaining parameters. We need to calculate the internal energy of a mole of the gas at temperature T. So related to the law of equipartition, now the internal energy, if I represent by U, that's going to be NRFT by 2, right? Now it's triatomic. So the degree of freedom will be 3 for translation, 3 for rotation. So total, that's going to be 6. So the number of mole is 1 and that's R 6 T by 2. So that will give me 3 R T. That's the internal energy. So let's check where is it? Option number 1. Let's go for the next fifth question. And here is the fifth question. Semiconductor. What I regularly say even during my analysis session that certain topics which are there only in JE mains, they are one of the very favorite stuffs for this examination. So this message is going to be very helpful for future aspiring. That's a diode and the forward bias condition, there's a voltage drop of 0.5 volt that has been given. Normally in the question we take 0 volt treating the diode as short circuit but this time the forward voltage drop has been given. The safe limit of current is 10 milliampere. That means the current through the diode should not exceed 10 milliampere, right? And then if a battery of 1.5 volt is used, we need to calculate the minimum value of resistance in series so that the diode will get the current within the permissible limit. Let's begin with a question here. Now, the diode, which is forward biased, all right, so that's how it comes. And this is the resistance that has to be connected in series. And the job of the resistor is to limit the current within the permissible value. Now, one more thing you could see here, this is given as 1.5 volt, all right. And let's see the value of potential difference that's given as 0.5 volt. And that's how the forward bias drop is represented and that's 0.5 volt. You need to compute the value of resistance and the value of current that is 10 milliampere. That's what it comes. Now this question has reduced into a very simple computation of circuit. The current 10 milliampere so that's going to be 10 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 or 0 0.01 ampere, whatever you prefer to call, and that will be the potential difference, which is 1 divided by resistance. So how much will be the value of resistance? 100 ohm. So option number 4, that's the correct one. Let's go to the next. The next one, that's been derived from gravitation, and this requires a little bit of thought process. Now, what does it say? There is a satellite which is initially moving in a very low orbit. That means the orbital radius can be taken as radius of Earth. And initially it's moving in a circular orbit. And then by a certain mechanism, by firing rockets, of course that would be in the opposite direction. The speed has been increased in the direction and the value comes out to be under root 3 by 2 times. Now, first of all, you know, if the speed of a satellite is increased, there is also a chance that it may escape. But you know, the escape velocity is root 2 times the existing orbiting velocity. And this velocity is less than the escape. So yes, our satellite is still secured within the gravitation field of Earth. But during that course of motion, we need to compute the farthest distance from the center of Earth. All right, now let's see. In order to do this, what we'll do is we'll take the help of a figure. That would be an advisable idea. So it's something like this is Earth. All right, and just now think initially the satellite is somewhere here. That's the direction of orbital velocity. And 
What was the orbital velocity? Of course, the orbital velocity is root gm divided by capital R, the initial one. And what is the new orbital velocity? Let me write it as v naught dash, and that will be root of 3 by 2 gm by r, because that's how the new velocity has been increased. You see, that's under root complete 3 by 2. Now, the path of the satellite will be elliptical. And you must be knowing when the velocity is greater than orbital, but less than escape, and it's projected at an angle 90 degree, so the point of projection will become a perigee, and the satellite will move in an elliptical orbit. So if I can manage to show the figure something like this, this is how the elliptical orbit will take place. Now we need to calculate the farthest distance from the center of the earth. There are many different ways, but let's try to see what would be the new value of energy. Let's see. So energy at every point is constant. I'll calculate the energy right here immediately after the velocity has been increased. And that is going to be one half m. The square of this velocity is three by two gm by capital R, that's the kinetic one. And then we also require the potential, so minus of GMM divided by capital R. So all done, and this much will be the new value of mechanical energy, is minus one by four GMM divided by R. Now this is also another hint to say that the satellite is still secured, why? because the mechanical energy is negative, which you know indicates the system is in a bound state. But then this mechanical energy can be equated to minus of GMM by 2A, where A is the semi-major axis, you know, the total mechanical energy in an elliptical orbit. That's how it goes. So this is going to give me the value of A, the semi-major axis as 2R. All right, so now let's see the final figure and that will give us the complete visualization. This is the given situation, right? And here is this particular point. This is R, the center of the earth, which will also act as a focus. And the total major axis is 4R because the semi is 2R. That means this particular distance will be equals to 3R. So this was a good question, worth doing. And let's see, let's hunt for our option, the farthest distance, that's 3R, and that is going to be option number one, which would be the correct. Okay, now let's move to the seventh question. 